What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over my Fortnite Chapter 5 settings. I've had a lot of requests to make a settings video for Chapter 5, but not much has changed. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, uh, remember to give it a like, subscribe to like to see more, comment down below what you think. I'm also going to talk about some products that I use at the end of the video, like my controller and accessories, things of that nature. Um, and then also before I get into this, I want to just say that there are no best settings. A lot of settings are just going to be preference. And that's why it's kind of odd to me that so many people have requested me to make an updated settings video when it's been like a month since my last one. I made one during OG. Uh, but if you feel comfortable with your settings and you're happy with how you're playing the game, there's no need to change it. Like just keep doing what works for you. On the flip side of that, if you're not comfortable and then you try my settings and it still doesn't feel good to you, that doesn't mean you have to keep using them because it works with me. A lot of it is just preference and play style. Um, and so I feel like there is like an over fixation on settings in the Fortnite community. Not only am I gonna show my settings, but I'm gonna explain a lot uh, of the settings and why I use them. So that can be helpful to kind of inform your decision. But for the most part, a lot of it is just preference. Played the X12, 240 FPS. Uh, I've been told that newer hardware Works better with DX12. When I switched from performance mode to DX12, my game started feeling a lot better. Obviously, I have everything on low or off for the most part. I'm not the most knowledgeable about PCs or PC settings. This is just what has worked the best for me thus far. So that's what I'm going to continue using. Uh, again, I'm not too, no too knowledgeable about that stuff. So I don't really feel like talking about it. For audio settings... This is typically what I have. The music volume will typically be a little bit louder. This only affects the lobby music. This doesn't affect the boss music. See, like if you put it on zero, the lobby music stops. But if you're in a POI and you're hearing music from the boss, uh, this has no effect on that. Uh, sound quality, I have on high. Background audio, I have on all sounds. To be honest, I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's when the game is minimized. Doesn't really matter. Visualize sound effects. I think this is a big one. Having this on is what gives you the indicator of, like, footsteps and gunshots. Like, if you've ever watched someone's gameplay and, like, above their crosshair, there's, like, little indicators on screen showing footsteps or whatever. That is what this setting does. And it definitely improves a lot of players' awareness. I didn't use it for the longest. I didn't like it. To be honest, I think it looks pretty ugly for, like, videos. Uh, but it is what it is. The setting is pretty good and for most players You're probably gonna have better awareness when using this. I'm um, not sure if any of this other stuff matters um, You want to play on the server which gives you the lowest ping toggle sprint I have on off auto open doors I have on on I'm to be honest I've thought about turning this off just because of how many times this season I'm reloading and then I walk past the door and then it like cancels my reload and reloading this season is just a struggle. But this is really nice for if you want to like push somebody in a building who has doors. You can just like walk towards the door, like sl sprint slide and it'll open. Also for build mode, a lot of people had this on just in case they ever like accidentally made doors. Uh, mantle activation I have on hold jump. I think that's much better than hold forward uh, just for having more control over your movement in a fight. In Fortnite OG, there was a bug where even when you had hold jump as your mantle activation, it would do it on forward anyways and i really did not like that for fighting hurdle activation i have on press jump rather than hold forward same thing i just want to be more in control of when my game mantles or when it hurdles hold the swap pickup i have on off i really like the idea of this setting but i've been told it like adds input delay for you just like picking up guns in general because it doesn't know if you're trying to swap or just pick it up normally but this is like let's say you only had a shotgun and an smg in your inventory and you have a white shotgun and then you find a blue one, you could hold the button to swap that white one for the blue one and then the white one would be on the ground. That's what the setting does. And like I said, I like the idea of it, but uh, I've been told it adds input delay or adds delay and there's a lot of weird settings in this game that add delay. Toggle targeting, I have on off. This is going to be that you have to hold your aim down sight button. Uh, normally, if you have toggle targeting on, you would just tap it to aim in and then tap it again to unaim in. I don't really care for that. Mark danger when targeting, I have off. Auto pickup weapons, I have off. Again, this is a setting that I like the idea of, but I've been told it's more delayed than just picking things up normally. Auto sort consumables to the right. I thought I had that on. I may have just accidentally turned it off when I touched my controller there because the settings menu is really weird this season. Uh, preferred item slots. I only have shotgun and SMG in slot one and two. And I used to have this more like fleshed out where like typically I'd put my AR in slot five. But I think it was in chapter three, season four, the meta was kind of like prime shotgun hammer AR. And I would tip, I like to put my spray weapon after my shotgun. So like if I was going to use a traditional loadout of like shotgun SMG, then like my AR is going to be in slot five, right? But there's times where I'm going to want to put my AR in slot two. Like a lot of times this season I run shotgun AR and then sniper in slot three and then heals and then shockwaves. Uh, so I just have it as shotgun SMG one and two, just because off spawn, 
if I get those items, I really want them to be in that slot. Like, if we're fighting off spawn and it's, like, you know, scuffed fight, like, very early on in the game, I don't want to have to think about rearranging my inventory. I just want my shotgun in slot 1 and then my SMG in slot 2 if I get one. So that's why I just have uh, shotgun and SMG prioritized like that. And the reason why a lot of controller players want to put shotgun in slot 1 is mainly because in build mode, the act of going from builds or from, like, pickaxe to builds back to weapon just defaults you to slot 1. Um, I'll maybe put a clip on in, in the video now showing that and explaining that, but it's, it's a build mode thing. So what I was saying before about the act of, for some reason, going from pickaxe to builds back to weapons just defaults you to slot 1, and that's why a lot of controller players put shotgun in slot 1. So you see here I'm on slot 4. I'm on my grappler. I'm going to go to pickaxe this wall and take it, and then RB, and then now I'm on my shotgun. And it doesn't matter what I do. We're on slot 3 there. Be on slot 2. Just like doing all of that puts you on slot one for whatever reason. Uh, and that is why a lot of controller players like to put shotgun in slot one. Uh, reset building choice, I have on on. Disable pre-edits, I have on. This is probably ideal to have off. Uh, this adds some amount of input delay to your edits, but I've tried to get used to it off again. Uh, and I just, it, I mess it up a lot. So I just have it on on. If I wanted to be the best that I possibly could be, I would probably turn the, this off and try to get used to that. Turbo building, I've on. You definitely want that on. Auto confirm edits, I just have on reset. Um, and then I'm not sure if any of this stuff matters. Yeah, I don't think any of this stuff matters. I think you definitely want this energy saving stuff off if you play on PC. Reticle and damage feedback, I have reticle on. Reticle ammo indicator on. I have damage numbers on list. I have reticle damage feedback on off. I think this is like those red indicators that would pop up. Damage number scale, I have on 100%. HUD scale I have on 90%. Uh, I don't know if there's anything too important here. I mean, you definitely want the kill feed on. That's a decent amount of information. That'll be in the bottom left. It tells you like who kills who and like that, that information could be helpful to you at times. Uh, but yeah, most of that is just preference. Gyro aiming, I don't use. Mouse and keyboard, I don't use. Um, keyboard settings, again, I don't use keyboard, but one thing that's relevant is going to be that i have scroll wheel up for slot one and i have reset edit as scroll wheel down Let's see uh and we'll get to that later on in the video when i talk about the products that i use controller auto run i have on off build immediately on builder pro on if you're playing builds you definitely want this edit hold time as low as possible slide hold time low but i don't like it as incredibly low that i'm accidentally sliding I don't use any of these settings, I don't think. Vibration on off. If you're playing on controller, I would recommend trying vibration off. Uh, if you're trying to like aim and fight people in this game, you know, having your controller shake is just not ideal. Some players really do not like the feel uh, of vibration off, but I I've played vibration off since like uh, 2008, 2009, I think, a super long time. Quick weapon beta, I don't like the setting, it feels delayed. And then also I have scroll wheel for getting the slot one, which we'll talk about. And I do have a separate video talking about the setting that I'll have linked down in the description. Sensitivity, uh, I play, this doesn't matter, I play 2.0 build, 1.4 edit, this is weird, a lot of people like the same build and edit, or like, closer, but for some reason this has just felt best to me when I go from like, making an edit to fighting, having like a really fast edit speed and then making an edit and confirming it and then going back to my lower sensitivity just felt weird to me, so I've always had a, a little bit of a lower edit than my build sense. Look horizontal and vertical on 40%, zero boosts, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, ADS 1212, no boosts again. Uh, look dampening time, I have on zero. This is going to be how long it takes for your sensitivity to reach its max sensitivity based on how much you're moving the analog stick, I think. So if you only move the analog stick a little bit, you won't get to your max sense until you move it more. And then like the timing affects like how much you have to be pressing your analog stick to get to your max speed. The reason why this would be beneficial to you is if you're making trying to make small adjustments when aiming if you only move the stick a little bit you get that lower sense it could be good uh but i play linear and the main advantage of linear over expo is just that you're on your max sensitivity a lot of times uh and for some people that's too fast and it makes it hard to make small adjustments at range but i've been playing linear since um chapter two season one or two i think i switched to it pretty early on i thought it was pretty good uh just having your sensitivity feel fast and consistent I think is really good for like building, editing, and then also shotgun shots. You do kind of lose out some long range, but I find this to be not that big of a deal when we have first person ARs in the game. 
or even like the hammer AR uh, in chapter three, I felt fine with, but like going to OG Fortnite when we had the bloom based ARs with a lot of bloom where you had to tap fire more, I definitely felt like I felt the downside of linear more during that season than any other recently. But again, that was a very unique circumstance. And it seems like for the most part with weapon attachments being a thing, uh, like the first person ARs are here to stay. And I feel like that's a huge bonus to linear players because it makes it easier to use the ARs at long range. And that's kind of the main downside of linear. I feel like linear in short, uh, there's lots of videos kind of explaining these things. But linear, it just makes your sense feel fast and consistent. That can lead to less control, but that also, I feel like, really yields itself well to, like, building, editing, shotgun shots, and maybe even, like, snipe flex. Expo is a little bit more controlled. It's, like, a gradual increase on your sensitivity. It's kind of like look dampening time, like, like we talked about before, where if you don't move your analog stick all the way, uh, you won't get your max sensitivity. It takes a little while for you to get your max sensitivity. You're probably on Expo. Expo is what most games use. Uh, so if you're coming from like Call of Duty and other shooters, Expo is probably going to feel more natural. But I, I think Linear is harder to use, but you do have more control over things. Uh, as weird as that sounds, if you do put the time in. And that is why my sensitivity is low. If you're an Expo player, you're probably looking at this and you're like 40-40. That's so low. Uh, but linear sensitivity just feels faster because you always have that like max sensitivity and that's also why I have no boosts on I feel like the main benefit of using linear is just that your sensitivity is as consistent as possible for better or worse for some people that makes it too hard to control but I think if you put the time in that consistent sensitivity is good and that's why I have none of the boosts on uh, and that's also why I have no look dampening time uh, 100% aim assist controller dead zones this is how much you move the stick before the game registers any movement uh in short i think you want these as low as possible to where you don't get stick drift 10 10 is going to be a good starting point i don't even have left stick drift but for whatever reason i've just used a slightly higher left stick dead zone i, I feel like when i have like super low left stick dead zone i move myself accidentally a lot of times and end up falling off of builds uh so i i've just done 13 10 for a while but if you have like a more like worn in controller you might have to have like 20 dead zone or 18 dead zone to where you don't have stick drift and stick drift is when like your character is moving on its own that's what the setting is for but you want it as low as you can go without getting stick drift while also having control over it if you haven't changed this before going super low might feel very weird to you i'd recommend starting at 10 10 it might feel very weird but if you put the time in you'll just have a lot more precision because if you have to like move your stick halfway before the game starts to register input, then it's gonna be harder for you to make those small adjustments while aiming and it's gonna take longer. But if you just have the lower dead zones, it's more sensitive, so it might be harder for you to control it first, but you do get more control over things, I think. Enable foot controller, I have on off. I accelerate with thumbstick, I have on. This just makes it so you can press forward while you're in the car and go. Now we'll go to the keybinds. Oh, this looks terrible. I don't like what they did with this. I haven't looked at this this season. So I have jump on X. Sprint I have on left, but I use a paddle for sprint. That I use one paddle and it's for sprint. I also play claw, which means my index finger is on the triangle circle X square buttons at all times. And so I don't have to take my thumb off the right stick to hit any of those buttons. And it just makes three have more control over doing those actions when aiming. Uh, right trigger fire, left trigger target, reload on square, next weapon R1, previous weapon L1, left stick pickaxe. Place marker on right on the D-pad. Crouch right stick. And what you want to avoid with a lot of these is these hold things. Or like where buttons are doing multiple things. Makes it harder to do. Uh, it just makes where you have less control. Like you see here. The default bind. At least it was when Fortnite came out. Switch mode and edit were the same thing. And switch mode is what brings out your blueprints and build mode. So if you were fighting. And you had to tap for blueprints or hold for edit. There was like some amount of delay when the game would wonder if you're editing or trying to build. So like, that's why like having, uh, I guess we'll get into it, but triangle is my edit button and switch mode is circle. Like having them on different buttons is pretty ideal. I, I think you just want as few things sharing a button as possible, but inevitably there will be some. Trap picker on square. This is only when building. Change material, right stick. Uh, default, like all that's, you know, walls, floor, ramp, stairs is just default. Switch mode on circle. Uh, edit controls are pretty simple. I have left trigger confirm, right trigger select, right stick reset. But I use scroll wheel reset. 
Um, and then I don't think any of this matters. I have touchpad map. This is, if you play on a PlayStation controller, the touchpad can be a decent button for something. If you do, you know, don't have a paddled controller, don't play claw. Um, and I, yeah, okay, so that's it. So now I'm going to talk about the products that I like using. So I am sponsored by AIM controllers. There'll be a link down in the description below. And I do have my own custom design with them. Their controllers have a lot of features, uh, but you see it has my logo on it. The dyno, it's also underneath the webcam. But their controllers have a lot of features like digital triggers, buttons, and bumpers. This just makes it to where the things are as sensitive as possible. Like, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but that's my trigger. Let's click. These are the buttons. I don't know if you can hear that, but it just makes it as sensitive as possible. And that gives you the lowest amount of delay as possible, you know? And then also there is paddles. I only use one for sprint because I play claw. I do also, and you can use my code for a discount. As of the time I'm uploading this in December, my code Evolve Jake on AIM controllers will be 10% off all orders $200 or more, or under $200, 15% off orders $200 to 250 or 20% off orders 250. So if you spend $250, use my code, you'll save $50. Uh, and that's pretty nice. And these controllers do have a lifetime warranty on the products that AIM modifies that doesn't affect stick drift. But if like you get digital triggers and the triggers break, uh, they will fix it. And that's the main reason why I partnered with them when I did is because their controllers have lifetime warranty on the products or on the aspects of the controller they modify. The reason why it doesn't affect stick drift. I think you can buy an upgraded warranty, but the reason why stick drift is not covered by that is because they just use stock Sony internals as far as that goes. So that's like not something they change. I also do use control freaks. This is going to be a thing that sits on your analog stick and makes it taller. I've used control freaks since like 2011, I think during black ops one. Um, and I am sponsored by them as well. You can use code evolve Jake for, I think 10% off, but also they sell all these products in like best buy GameStop. Um, Target, Walmart, like there's a lot of stores that sell control freaks if you would prefer to get it that way. I like one high rise galaxy on the right stick and nothing on the left. And what this does is like making the analog stick taller adds more leverage to it and it makes it easier for you to make small adjustments. I think it's very preference though. I've known good players that really like using them. I've known good players that didn't like using them. It's a relatively inexpensive product to buy. I think they're like $15, $20 or so. Uh, I would recommend trying them out if you are someone who's, you know, wants to get better at the game. As far as like products that you can buy to potentially improve your performance in game, uh, Control Freaks are definitely up there. But like I said, it's more of a preference thing. And then one of the final products I want to talk about is going to be this controller scroll wheel here. I don't think I have a code with them. Uh, there, it'll be linked down in the description below though, the pro scroller, and this gives you a scroll wheel on your controller essentially. And this is very good for Fortnite, mainly if you play build mode, but also like I talked about before the way like mouse and keyboard and controller, like interact with like items is weird because on keyboard here, you can have a separate bind for each weapon slot. And that was another reason why I like having shotgun in slot one is because my scroll wheel up is shot, uh, slot one. Uh, so I can just get to my shotgun by hitting scroll wheel up whenever I want. And for whatever reason, the scroll wheel does not, uh, impact aim assist at all. Uh, when you're in game and you touch your mouse or keyboard, uh, you will get the keyboard buttons at the bottom. Like if I hit space bar, like, uh, let's just load into a game real quick. But if you, I don't know what I could load into quickly. Maybe this one. But if you touch your mouse or keyboard, you will get the keyboard buttons at the bottom. And if that happens, your aim assist will be disabled for a period of time afterwards. Feels like to me, like for the rest of the game. Uh, so you don't want to be touching your mouse or keyboard while you're playing controller. But for some reason, scroll wheel has no impact on that. And I will show that in a moment when we load into the game that n the buttons at the bottom don't change when I hit scroll wheel. So having shotgun in slot one uh, is really nice. If you only play zero build, you could do like slot one scroll wheel up and then another action like another item slot scroll wheel down i like having edit uh scroll wheel or scroll wheel reset is one of the kind of bigger advantages that keyboard has over controller and i do play both builds and zero builds so if you're a builds player i think scroll wheel reset is really nice all right so see i'm on my sm I'm, i guess we'll get more things just to like make it easier so i'm gonna be on the twin mag here and if I want to get to my slot one, I have to either uh, L1 twice or R1 three times, right? But I'm going to be on here. I'm on my twin mag error. 
hit scroll wheel up, and I'm on the wood stake shotgun just immediately. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could be building, hit scroll wheel up, I'm on the wood stake shotgun. I'm on slot one. And then for resetting, scroll, scroll wheel down for reset, it just makes resetting very nice. Uh, if I wanted to do that normally on controller, I have to go into the edit and then hit my reset button. And then you used to have to hit a confirm as well. So scroll wheel reset just makes it to where you don't even have to go into the edit to reset it and that just is much more convenient so if you are a controller player and you want to do well in builds having a pro scroller for you know scroll reset and then also just always being able to get on slot one is really nice if you're zero build i feel like it's not as impactful like if you only ever play zero build but still if you have the money to spend and you don't really care then uh you could do separate inventory slots for either direction of the scroll wheel that way you can just get to things super conveniently like maybe slot one up for shotgun and then maybe like slot five down so you can just get the shockwave super easily that's probably what i would do if i only ever played zero build also i forgot to include this like i was talking about before about how you see when i do scroll wheel it doesn't the buttons on the bottom don't change the keyboard buttons right i'm scroll wheeling to get the sh shotgun the bot the buttons don't change but if i hit space bar to jump watch this now I have keyboard buttons at the bottom until I touch my controller input again. And that is going to be when like touching one of those other things impacts aim assist. And that was why I was saying I don't think scroll wheel impacts aim assist. Not only if I feel like I don't lose aim assist after scroll wheeling, but also the buttons on the bottom don't change for whatever reason. So like the game never registered me as being on keyboard or mouse. But that, that's what I was trying to say before about like the buttons not changing, but I forgot to include it in that initial part. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful informative interesting as always if you did remember to give a like subscribe to see more like i said my sponsors will be down in the description if you're interested in trying any of those products uh, all my codes for everything is just evolved jake and i will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching